Hello community, GPT-4 code interpreter. I upload two CSV files and I ask, hey, can you analyze now both files? And GPT-4 comes back and says, yes, of course. So let's display the content, begin with the first CSV file. And you see, there's a problem parsing here the CSV file. They ask me, hey, another topic, another way to open this? It says, yes. So, and I pretend to be a no coder. So I do not look here at the Python information that is provided here. You know, you see here in these white and green boxes, when you click show work, you would see the Python code, but I'm a no coder. I'm just using this to get the information that normally I would use a database for. So let's have a look. And I say, hey, can you find a cross relation between both files? And GPT-4 comes certainly to perform a cross relation, we need to identify shared keys or attribute. So we need columns that have a unique identifier. Normally it's a numerical identifier. So they look here at project ID, no, there was an error. I apologize for the oversight. Let's correct this. And GPT-4 comes back and tries another way. Another problem. Okay. And we can see here, cross relation. I need to split these columns at the semicolons to extract the relevant data points. Let's start by extracting the project ID or ID from both data frames. And tells me, hey, it appears there are no shared entries between the two data sets. I can provide a few sample entries for both data sets. So let's inspect it manually and I say, okay, let's go for it. So look here, it shows us identical numbers, absolutely identical numbers, but it is not able to understand that those numbers are identical and are the unique identifier. Says, okay, I'll, I clean the project ID columns by stripping any unwanted characters and then I recheck the overlap. GPT-4 comes back, it's surprising that even after cleaning, there still appears no overlap. My goodness. Comes back and says, hey, should I try something else? And say, yes. So GPT-4 says, okay, I'll start by checking if the seemingly matching project IDs values from our sample truly exist in both data sets. And the result is, does not contain any of the samples. And the second file also contains all three of the sample ID values, okay. Okay, I'll, uh, GPT-4 says, I'll re-examine here the project. So, so another time. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I check now if there's an overlap and it is working. GPT-4 is syncing with all of its parts like unexpectedly, even after correcting the extraction of the ID values. There still appears to be no other overlap between the two data set. Given this surprising result, I'll display a sample of the newly extracted project ID values. <laughs> the complexity of the data in the project CSV file is causing extraction challenges, GPT-4 has challenges. Given the complexities, I'll take a different approach. I'll display the first lines as raw text, and this will allow us to manually identify the correct position and the pattern facilitating a more precise extraction process. So GPT-4 does not give up. It's fighting. It's fighting to find here a way. It goes on. GPT-4 says, I'm genuinely surprised, even after the robust extraction process, there still appears to be no overlap between the two data set. GPT-4 is surprised. Can you say that? Now, I think there are minimum 10 different approaches for me as a non-coder, that GPT-4 failed. So I tell now GPT-4, hey, both files have a very special delimiter and it is not a colon like in America, but we here in Europe, we use a semicolon delimiter. And now this is the information that GPT-4 needs. I reprocess pre both files using a semicolon as the delimiter. This was it. The difference between a colon and a semicolon made all the problems GPT-4 could not resolve. Imagine. Now GPT-4 comes, yes, we successfully structured the data frames. Yes, finally, yes, I have it now. Now that we have structured the data correctly, I'll attempt to merge the data sets again. 
And then comes back and says, great, I used this semicolon delimiter and we identified 5,765 projects. Now that we have merged the data set, what would you like? How would you like to proceed? And I'm now really shy and I say, hey, can you perform a simple exp exploratory data analysis and have here some topic clusters? that are in the title and in the project descriptions. And GPT-4 comes back and says, hey, certainly topic clustering or topic modeling can be performed by an LDA. So we do the pre-processing, we do the LDA training of the model, and then we assign the most probable topic to each project. So it's how many projects, how many clusters do you want? 10, for example. And I say, well, I'm generous. Start with 20 different topic clusters. And here we go. So we do the pre-process, we do the cleaning here of our data set. We do the tokenization, we do the stop word removing. A bag of word, wow, a bag of word is really something ancient. In the stone age, we did a bag of words, but okay, okay, it's, it's free. I'm a non-coder, I don't know anything of this. So I have here an LDA model, 20 topics, display the top words for each topic. Let's begin with the pre-processing. GPT-4 comes back and says, hey, there's an issue with the NLTK stop words because it cannot load them from the internet. It does not have access to the internet. So I create my own basic set of English stop words for the pre-processing step. So let's continue with the tokenization and the vectorization process of all those title and all those project description. Yes, the text has been successfully tokenized, vectorized. We have now a representation of 20,000 unique terms across all the 5,700 projects. Now let's proceed to train the LDA model with 20 topics and then display the top words for each topic. And after 30 seconds, GPT-4 comes back and says, yes, I have identified 20 topics. Look, for each topic here, you see the main, the most important words. Would you like to take any other options or any other exploration from the data? And I say, yes, create a vertical bar chart with labels and the number of project as the labels in this chart. So GPT-4 is working again. And as a non-coder, I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know nothing about matplotlib or any plotly algorithm. I have no idea. And, and yep, uh, here we have, I mean, it's, it's a uh, vertical. I mean, the, 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 the bar is vertical, but not the chart. Okay. Yeah. Now, never mind. So here we have 20 clusters and on the X axis, you have the three dominant word and you have here the bars according to the number of projects in our 5,765 projects. Not bad for a non-professional and non-coder as I am today. I have here a very good overview of over 5,000 projects, not knowing anything about SQL, not knowing anything about databases or Python coding, anything at all. And I say, hey, I want a bar chart, a, a vertical visualization. And says, ah, you want a horizontal bar chart. So, okay, okay, I'm not going to fight with GPT-4 about this. I just want my bar charts. Yeah, the, the, the bars are horizontally Yuppie, yeah, we have it. Have a look at this. This is exactly what I wanted. The top three words for each of the 20 clusters. I have now an idea how those 5,700 projects are clustered. And I say, hey, can you dive into one and only one of the cluster, quantum new system, and divide it into 20 subclusters? Same matter, same visualization. GPT-4 says, of course, here I go and yippee. So it's filtering out a project only for this specific clusters. Thus again, an LDA model. And here for quantum new system with 459 project, we get now here all relevant subclusters. Let's have a look if GPT-4 is able to do this. You know, a non-coder today, I have no idea. I'm not looking at the Python code, what goes right, what goes wrong. I'm just using here the complete and overwhelming intelligence. And here we are. Here are for the subcluster quantum new systems, all 
Detailed categories. Learning new systems. Control topological. Astrophysics. Data learning theory. New flat gravity. Astrophysics again. Lightning project synthesis. Okay. So, GPT-4 gives me, okay. And I say, hey, can you give me, instead of three words, give me the six top words per subcluster? And comes back and says, sure. Top cluster one, subcluster two, subcluster three. Okay. And so on. It <laughs> just gives me five subclusters. <laughs> and I say, hey, find a perfect title for each subcluster and print a complete list of all 20 subcluster titles. So it says, okay, so from those three words, can he create a sentence? Or was I not precise enough to say, hey, you have to go and look at the project description and then do here the analysis. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, this perfect title has only three words. So I was not precise enough instructing GPT-4 what to do. This is not a good idea. So I have to reformulate my command for GPT-4. Okay, let's do this. So I say redo the complete project title analysis of all 459 projects and design a valid and informative sentence for each of the 20 subclusters. GPT-4 says, okay, certainly. So Let's do the interpretation. Let's do the sentence grafting with write a coherent and descriptive sentence for each subcluster. And here we are, subcluster one. Investigate active processes in a emission system and explore the nuances of matter. Research the interaction between dust and DNA. Formation process and learning system. Understanding new methodologies. Dynamics and delving into project-specific challenges. It's not really informative. And here we see that an LDA is not the right methodology. What I would need, a minimum, I would need a bird system or a sentence bird system to do exactly this analysis. But I can also search here in the whole 5,000 projects for a specific topic like artificial intelligence. And I say, hey, find all projects that are concerning artificial intelligence and cluster them in 10 topics and show me their distribution. And of course, here in the very first stages of Code Interpreter, we only have an LDA model. We do not have a sentence bird model, but we could ask for the Python code, but we are non-coders. So we let the machine do all the work, including here the Python execution. So it comes back, I have identified 278 projects related to artificial intelligence. Great. And now I proceed to cluster these AI-related projects into 10 cluster, unfortunately only using the LDA model. And then I visualize the distribution of projects among these clusters. Let's continue with the clustering process and it tells me, hey, there was an issue. I'll investigate the issue and correct here. So let's do it again. I'm not going to look what the Python code says. No, I'm a non-coder. I, yes. Okay, I have to look. Sorry, just, just to get an idea. What a, oh, shape mismatch. Okay, okay. No, we're not going to look. Yippee, this is it. So, AI projects per cluster. Cancer, AI intelligence, artificial intelligence, rail photon polymerization, cancer, European technology, research, AI intelligence, interesting research. And let's see if we can dive into one subcluster here, like AI artificial intelligence. So I say, hey, dive into the topic AI artificial intelligence and show me relevant projects. GPT-4 comes back. Certainly, I'll filter out a project that specifically mentions artificial intelligence in their titles or project description. And after filtering, I provide a list of the relevant projects for you. I made another arrow, GPT-4, oh my goodness. But here we come back and we have now, oh, it is not the title, but it is the project objective. So more or less the description. Okay, now I just wanted the title. So maybe I have not been precise enough to say uh, objective is nice, but I want the project title. So I say, hey, 
give me the titles of these projects only, not the project objectives. Yes, okay, here are the title acronyms of the top 10 projects. <laughs> no, that, okay, I get now the acronym. No, I don't want the acronym. I said, no, not the acronyms. I want the titles. GPT-4 comes back and says, I apologize for the oversight. So let's extract the actual project titles. Finished work? Yippee. Now we, oh no, I apologize for the confusion. I mistakenly tried to access a column named project title, which does not exist. To correct this, I'll review the available columns again and retrieve the titles. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> now let's extract the titles of the AI-related projects. And here are now the titles of the top 10 AI-related projects. Okay. Brain surgery, medical imaging, AI for medical imaging. Neurons, yes, data-driven integrated approaches, chemical safety, drug development. Interesting, interesting. What about this eight? Monitoring of earthquake nuclearization for faults near urban areas. So I tell GPT-4, hey, how do you use here with earthquake nuclearization for faults near urban areas AI? Says, okay, GPT-4 comes back and says, I'll extract the details of the project real-time monitoring of earthquake nucle nucleation for faults in the urban areas. I was like, I apologize, there's an error, let me correct our error again. It's working, it's searching. I apologize for the confusion. I encountered an issue retrieving the project details. Why? It's a CSV file. It's a CSV file. And comes back, okay, I can come up with something. No, no, this is not okay, GPT-4, that you come up with something that is related. I want the official documentation. So I say, hey, I want the official project description, the official one, not what you came up with. And, clunk, we reached here the current usage cap for GPT-4. Saved by the bell, GPT-4, saved by the bell. But I think this gives you a good idea how GPT-4 analyzes with Code Interpreter two different files and what it is able, what it is not able to do, where I make a mistake not being precise enough. I think those are fascinating topics to learn for your next encounter with GPT-4 Code Interpreter.